everyone, I'm Danny Walker. Welcome to my channel. If you are new, make sure that you subscribe before exiting this video. Like it, give it a thumbs up, and share it with your friends. Today I'm discussing my Miss Universe pre-arrival picks, even though technically a couple of the countries have already made their way over to Miss Universe in Las Vegas. This is so exciting just to think that they're all arriving here. <sighs> I'm so happy. Also, I'm wearing red. I feel like November and December are Christmas months. I, ju I just want to celebrate the holidays all day, every day. So I felt festive and I wore red. I have selected these girls because some of them I have noticed on social media. Some of them I have noticed on the Miss Universe website because of their images and their bios. And then if I was interested in a girl, I went back on their Instagram and I tried to find more information about them. They are all beautiful. Obviously, it's Miss Universe, but I picked them for more than just their beauty. And these are the girls that just stick out to me right off the bat. I may change my opinions as soon as we actually see all of them arrive and then of course I'll change my opinions after prelims. In no particular order, let's begin. South Africa. Obviously a gorgeous girl. I think that she has a really great look on stage because her, her features aren't too harsh. She seems just like a really approachable, friendly person. I was looking at her walk as well and her walk was pretty good. I think that she has a lot of confidence on stage and I think that that's only building because of her preparation. I did see a picture of a gown online and they were saying that that might be one of the pieces of wardrobe that she's going to wear to Miss Universe. I wasn't excited about it. I'm hoping that that will not be a preliminary gown or a final gown. We will see about that very soon. Next is Germany. I have seen some really beautiful contestants coming out of Germany, but for some reason or another, they have not placed. So I'm hoping that because they have this really beautiful title holder this year, that she will be able to do really well at Miss Universe and at least get into that top 10 so we can see more of her during the finale and hear more from her. But like I said, I don't know how strong her team is for preparation because it's going to take a lot more than just a beautiful face, which she certainly has, to place in the top 10 at Miss Universe. We're seeing more and more that girls need substance and not just a pretty face, which I actually love. Guyana, she's interesting. She just competed, I believe, for Miss World or Miss Grand. Oh gosh, don't quote me on that. Well, she just competed for another big international pageant. So I'm hoping that maybe she learned some lessons from there. But what I like about Guyana is that she does have a cause that she advocates and her images are looking really great. She seems like she is putting her heart into preparation, just judging by her social media. And I like that she has experience at another international pageant. I do feel that sometimes that helps a girl because when you compete at a pageant and you're doing a huge one where you're going to be in another country for two, maybe three weeks, you understand that it's a marathon and I think that that experience can really help her here. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Guyana in the top 10 this year. Miss Thailand. If you guys watch this channel, you know that I love Miss Thailand. I think that Thailand this year is exceptional just as many Miss Thailands are. She's six feet tall and stunning. I like that her wardrobe that they just revealed is very couture inspired. So she's wearing something that's unique. I do wish that they wouldn't have put her in navy. I don't think that the color navy stands out on a brunette, but we don't know what the stage is gonna look like or how that's gonna fare. So I hope that she does so well. I can see her up in the top six up in the top three. Who knows what Miss Universe is going to do this year. But we saw last year's Miss Thailand wear black on stage and she was a brunette and she still made it up there and her gown was so different and so unique. I feel that the way that Thailand prepares their contestants is suited for that contestant and they're not trying to make her something else. Their styling is top notch and I cannot wait to see this girl compete. Haiti, I... I'm not in love with her photo that she posted on the website, 
but if you have seen me post her on Pageant Access Instagram, you will see that she is stunning. She is very young, and I think that we have seen this shift towards older contestants at Miss USA and Miss Universe because our older contestants have a lot more life experience, and the judges seem to have been drawn towards that in recent years, or at least IMG has appreciated that type of life experience for contestants. So I think Haiti is really young, and I think this is going to be a really great new experience for her. It might be a little bit overwhelming but I'm hoping that they're putting the same type of preparation into this year's Miss Haiti as last year's because as you know Haiti was first runner-up last year and I think once again they can have a contestant that's at least going to be up in the top 10. Vietnam is fierce. If you haven't checked her out already, go take a look at her contestant profile on MissUniverse.com. She is outstanding. That girl is a total package. She has causes that she believes in. She's intelligent. She has a story. She's inspiring. She's confident. And you can see that in her images. You can see it in her bio. That girl is somebody to watch this year. I am so excited for Vietnam and I really hope that they're choosing a great gown because in the past I have not always loved Miss Vietnam's gown and sometimes I feel as though that has hindered them because the dress doesn't necessarily make her stand out enough on on stage or it's just not suited for her. So I am really hoping and praying for Miss Vietnam this year that they choose a great gown for prelims. Philippines, once again, a heavy hitter. I am a huge fan of this Miss Philippines. Her confidence is through the roof if you take a look at her on social media. She's so tall and so statuesque and so gorgeous. How could you not love Miss Philippines this year? I cannot wait to see her wardrobe. I think that her image on MissUniverse.com right now is very unique. It's different. It's so well done. It catches my eye aside from her just being so stunning. And I think that she's very well prepared, so I would not be surprised if we saw Philippines take home another crown this year. Russia is so interesting. She did not win the big title at her national pageant. They have two winners crowned, a different girl was crowned Miss Russia, but that organization chooses which girl that they send from their top two scores. They choose the girl that they send to Universe and that they send to Miss World. So they ended up choosing the winner of Miss Russia and sending her to Miss World, and technically your first runner up went to Miss Universe and a lot of people are very happy about that. She is stunning. She's also very, very young and I'm not seeing a lot of substance from that organization that's promoting her on social media. Everybody's just loving her because of her beauty and that's that's great. That's going to be one of the things that makes her stand out. Use that. But beyond that, we have to know why is she really competing in Miss Universe and why would she make a great Miss Universe? aside from being able to take great photos. So I'm hoping that they're going to be able to put together her story and show how she is relatable to women all over the world and how she can inspire them. USA! Yes, Kyra! When you meet Kyra, you really understand why she won. She is so warm and sincere and genuine and she's about 5'11 and stunning. She is a total package and I'm so happy that she is representing the U.S. this year because she has been doing so much work for the STEM field and I love that because she is once again showing just like Deshauna Barber did that pageant girls are not just these girls who are superficial, who only care about their hair, their makeup, their walk. It's about so much more than just your outer appearance and Kyra has all of that. So I'm, I'm just so proud of her. I'm getting emotional thinking about her going to Miss Universe because she is very much a standout to me and plus, and I hope that she wears her hair as she did at Miss USA. I really do because a couple of appearances she has straightened her hair and I just love her natural hair so I'm, I'm I would assume that they would style it that way at Miss USA because her photos are like that 
and I just hope that she does decide to wear it like that the whole time because that is one of the other things that does make her stand out in a crowd. You just look at her. Miss Australia this year is stunning as usual. Last year we didn't see Australia have a placement at Miss Universe, but I think this could be their comeback year. Their title holder is exemplary. She cares about mental health issues. She is an artist and of course she's a model like many of the contestants. I really did like how fresh and youthful she looked when she won her national title. She won in a light pink two-piece gown so I'm curious to see how they're going to style her at Miss Universe but I do like her image that they submitted for Miss Universe. It looks a little bit more commercial and not so pageanty. She looks like a real girl. She looks like herself. Miss France, we have to talk about her. We have seen recently that when a country wins Miss Universe or a state wins Miss USA, that the very next year they come back very competitive, that their title holders are front runners. So we have to talk about Miss France. She's also very different. I feel that one of the things that made her stand out was her hair, just like with Kyra at Miss USA. The other thing that struck me is that in her official photo on Miss Universe, she is wearing a crown. I don't think I've ever seen a contestant wear a crown in their official photo but she is very beautiful I love the way that they have been styling her in various photo shoots I think that she looks so versatile across the board she is also a tomboy as she says in her bio which I think is always an asset to a contestant because it makes you you know not the typical pageant girl unlike myself who can't play any sports, but she is into fencing and she wants to create more opportunities for youth that are interested in fencing. So I thought that was different. It was really unique. And I bet they're going to be talking about that at Miss Universe. Miss Indonesia this year is stunning. She's been modeling for the past 12 years, but she really cares to talk about violence against children and educational programs. That's interesting to me since she is a model and I'm not sure if she has actually attended college or what her other career ambitions might be outside of modeling. And I wonder why she is inspired by those causes, but she is gorgeous. I love her image. It's very clear that she's a professional model in her pictures on Miss Universe. Miss Canada this year is so cute. She looks a little bit like a teen to me when she won her national title, which I think is really not an issue because you could just change the hair and the makeup a little bit for nationals and come out and kill it on stage. And I think that this could be another year that we're going to see Canada in the top 10, although this is a very competitive year at Miss Universe. Canada is so beautiful and she is passionate about being a technology consultant working in the STEM field. So like Kyra, I assume that she will be talking about that at Miss Universe and we'll see how that fares. I think it's a little difficult when you have somebody who has the same platform that you do when you're both talking about it. How does that fare with the judges when two girls care about the same thing? What other ways are they going to distinguish themselves and stand out? Kyra got crowned before Miss Canada did, so Kyra has been working a lot more in the STEM field and I think that she might have more to talk about. So I'm curious to see what they're going to do for Miss Canada. Miss Venezuela is remarkable as always but in recent years we have not seen them place which has been very shocking but this year's Miss Venezuela has a degree in mechanical engineering so she is not just a pretty face and I think that Miss Universe has become a lot more than just physical beauty but she has the physical beauty and she also has a lot more than that so I think that Venezuela this year can make a comeback. Once again, Colombia is bringing a very strong competitor to Miss Universe. The current Miss Colombia is just stunning. I feel like, as always, how gorgeous are the Colombian women. And she is an actress. She's hoping that her confidence that she has had on screen is going to translate to the Miss Universe competition. We will see. Look at Pia. She was also an actress. And I think that that could have helped her on camera because she's so used to being in front of those cameras. I was watching Columbia's footage. I feel like they have not promoted this Miss Columbia as they have the two previous Miss Columbias and I was looking at her footage from her national competition and I think that her body is just perfect and incredible but I wish that we're gonna see some more 
facial expressions from her when she's on stage because last year's Miss Columbia like that's what she did so well you would see her on stage and it was all just like eyes and smiles she was so interesting to watch so I'm hoping that this year's Miss Columbia can take a little bit of that and bring that to Miss Universe this year. Lastly is Miss Iceland. She's interesting because she had held another huge international title, but she gave up the title because her directors had said that they wanted her to lose weight. This girl is an athlete too, can I just say. She's gorgeous, she's well-spoken, she's fit, and for somebody to say to her that she just needed to lose weight to me was outrageous. Because of that, she decided to give up her title and not compete at the international level for that. I cannot remember if it was for Miss World or for Miss Grand International or Miss International, but she has held several other huge titles, so I'm not surprised she finally has won the Miss Universe Iceland title. I think she's an amazing representative, but I am surprised that we did not see any of that on her bio because that's what she was really known for, so I'm wondering if she's going to talk about that because that could be a really huge story, as we saw last year with Miss Canada and how she was scrutinized for her weight in the swimsuit competition. Miss Iceland, who has had, I would say, a similar experience with weight even though neither women are huge in my opinion or anywhere near even plus size uh, because she had that similar experience i thought that we would hear a little bit more about that because that's what made her so likable miss iceland was headed in that direction to inspire young women but i haven't seen her promote that this year as miss iceland so i thought that was interesting and i'm wondering if we're going to hear about that at miss universe there you have it those are my pre-arrival favorites. Those are the women that have stood out to me for their preparation. I wish all of the girls the best at Miss Universe. I cannot wait to go watch them at the preliminary competition in a few weeks. Please be sure to follow me on my social media at Pageant Access, at Danny Walker, and of course at Miss MTUSA. I'm going to be posting lots of pictures and videos and of course vlogging the entire experience. If you guys haven't already subscribed, make sure that you do so so you can join me for the rest of of this year as Miss Montana USA and of course for lots of other pageant and fun episodes. Thank you for watching this episode though. Please be sure to share it with your friends, give it a thumbs up. I hope you like it and join me next time.